thank you so much. For me, it's good afternoon because I'm living here in Portugal. So I'm talking from Portugal, by the way. I'm Brazilian, but I'm living here in Portugal. And uh, so good afternoon and, and, you know, good morning, good evening, whatever you want or wherever you stay. So today we, we're going to talk about more hunting, using Python as a tackle weapon. So uh, the idea during this conversation is to talk more about the security stuff or a more secure way, okay? And uh, that's the idea during this conversation. So this is my contact at Twitter, uh, Philip Pierce, and some information that you can find about me, you can find it here in my social medias. I have here a small web page. It's not a developer or web application. It's very nice. It's a, a simple template that I'm using just to put in some information about me, talks and articles and stuff like that. My GitHub is not a, you know, very awesome GitHub, but we can find some project there if you want you know, to, to see some uh, research that I made in, you can find there in my LinkedIn as well here. So who is this guy that I'm talking now, Felipe? So I am security research at Sapporo. Sapporo is um, a startup company from Swiss. Switzerland So very nice company. I'm starting to work in there as a security research. I'm responsible to provide this security knowledge for this product. The idea behind of this product is to look in more the how the attack um, how is the you know the the more fast way that attacker can find in in whatever company you can imagine? So what should be the the minimal uh, way that attacker can explore in the specific environment, or what kind of the minimal or more critical high uh, target value the attacker can find in the specific organization? So the idea behind of this specifically company or this product that I'm developing is to finding this specifically top point inside of the organizations and to see and because you know as you can imagine when you talk about the product or the applications or the data we can we have many many informations in a specifically company or whatever company you work or you are work it so how you can see what is the most value how uh, target or most important information you can find so how you can you know focus uh, when you talk about the security way, of course. So I'm working as a security research there. And I am the, I'm advocate in two different companies, Cybersecurity Advocate and San Segura. It's a Brazilian company. And I'm advocate of this awesome project, starting in the US, by the way, hacking is not a crime. And the idea behind of this project is to talk more about the, how you can use your creative mind. And during this conversation, I will explain more how you can use your creative mind because when you explore something or when you using your creative mind you are executing this creative mind okay this is hacking concept it's not a, when you talk about the ransomware attack or you know leaks of the informations or the data it's not a hacker not a hacker the person or a hacking no no it's a cyber criminal okay it's a threat actor this is the most it's a miscom you know concept so the idea behind of this project is to clarify that okay so explain how important it is you can and by the way how you can use your creative mind to help the companies you know to protect themselves so that's the idea behind of this project and i'm uh, part of the coordinator team of the defcon groups in sao paulo by the way and i'm a structure writer and reviewer of those three magazines here in europe and i have a course of the malware attack with the qchain methodology in fantastic magazine and uh, the idea behind of this course is using the how you can protect the company. Again, as more about the you can looking for a security stuff. Okay, so I know. So probably you are a developer guy or DevOps guy, or maybe you know something about the security. But it's very important to put all those people in the same page. So first of all, we need to understand what is exactly a threat. Okay, so it's according to this ISO, not a definition from Philippe, it's a definition from this specifically ISO, okay, is a, a potential cause of the incident. Okay, so may cause harm to the systems or organizations, but what is exactly Philippe a threat? So well, another point is during this conversation, it's very important to clarify. We using part of this conversation to explain something uh, more theoric this way, and, and let's say this way, and other part is more practical, is a demo that I'm using. So because of that, it's important to explain those theory, okay? So 
what does that mean exactly a threat? So it's a software attack or maybe a theft of intellectual property or maybe identity theft. If you see here, all those things is related to specifically data. So when you need to create something or when you need to develop something in your organization, you have an specifically software. When you build in specifically code, you can create a code, you can, you know, build this in specific, you can use in CI CD, use in a pipeline, you can build this, create in a specific container, for example, and you can create in a specific endpoint to publish this application. So if you see all those steps called uh, software development lifecycle or CSDLC, you can use in this has in your environment, has an, an um, the developer environment. But the attacker perspective, when you explore this, is maybe can be a, a, a specifically thread. In the same way, when you talk about the top death of intellectual property, identity death, and sabotage, it's another kind of thread. And all those examples, um, or, or in this case, information extortion, a kind of ransom, if you don't know what is exactly the answer, maybe you don't have a time to explain how these attacks work, but basically, but basically is when you attacker explore your environment, your code, your organization, your data, encrypted this specifically uh, data and request a specific payment for that. So this is the attack of the ransomware, okay? So all those examples of the information security threat. And by the way, many organizations having look of that to working more at ready hunting practice. Why? Because they need to find it or specifically attacking side of the environment, right? So because of that, it's very important to understand what is exactly threat. And one of the main advantage when you know how the, develop, the, the, the software works or when, when you develop something in Python, for example, this kind of language, it's, it's very interesting to automatize all those processes when you talk about the security. Because nowadays, many security guys have been using a Python uh, has a, a, a code or to use it for automatize all this process. So because of that, it, when we explain or when we talk for and the, the, in the developer events, so it's very interesting. So how the developers, when you talk about specific Python script, can help in the security teams and not only help it, but if you like, or if you would like to learn more about the security stuff, you can move inside of this security field on these different fields actually because you know how the is the flow of the applications you know how you can create your code so because of that you can use in your creative mind to explore vulnerabilities or other things like this so let's think so how you can using in the in the car if you think about the career for example so how you can put in your knowledge in python for example in a security way let's say this way Okay, so you can work in as a, a research like me or searching for a, a thread or maybe helping the startups or company to increase, you know, the products or the strategy of the product. You can discover a new kind of attacks. It's very important because when you understand how the attack works, when you pick up some code, you can, you know, analyze all those codes. You can help to discover new attacks. You can help the team to provide uh, a specifically proactive line of the defense against advanced threat, advanced persistent threat. It's a kind of this acronym, exactly. APTs, advanced persistent threat, is a, it's all advanced attacks responsible or created by a specifically groups or the cyber criminals. And you can work using offensive techniques. It's very interesting. Main one, when you have a knowledge of the program language because you know how the application works. So you can, using this knowledge to apply in the software, it's, it's wonderful, okay? And you can look in or try to search for a new vulnerabilities in specifically applications or softwares or API or different containers and whatever. You can develop an exploit to exploit. It's a part of code that you can use it to explore the specifically code, let's say this way. Exploit is a, it's a kind of code developed by you or, of course, nowadays using by the cyber criminals or the threat actors. This exploit is responsible to explore vulnerabilities in the software because many times when we develop in specifically apps, maybe we, we, we don't use in 
sometimes the best practice of the security stuff, like uh, best practices recommended by NIST, by OWASP, is a kind of organization that recommending for specifically when you develop some applications or API or whatever, okay? You can work with the reverse engineering because when you need to build specifically code, create a specifically binary. So for the attacker perspective or the security perspective, you can reverse in this binary, understand how all those structures work and how is uh, this binary works within this specifically and the architecture of the, the computer and so on and so on. Uh, working with intrusion detection, like um, to create intelligence from the security products, okay? And works with the forensic analysis. It's supposed more than like this, uh, I mean, when attacker happened, so you need to investigate more about that. So, so it's possibility when you are, for example, a developer, when you develop something in Python, so all those possibilities that you can have to work in a security stuff. So first of all, we have a thread, as I mentioned. So we have a let's resume in this uh, two specifically threads, unknown threads and known threads and unknown threads. <clears throat> it's very important you understand you understand how the known thread works because when you understand those behaviors or those steps, you can in fact discover the unknown threads because you already understand a specific characteristic for this known thread. Because of that, it's very important to understand those steps. So when you create executing specific investigations or when you create a specific code to executing specifically scanning in the application to find a specific vulnerability in your code, for example, you can uh, register all those information. It's very important because you can create a specific report and what I am, what can I do with this report, Philip? You can present your manager, your coordinator, because you will not only learn about how this thread works, but you understand all those steps performed by this attacker. Okay. And you can, of course, improve your defenses mechanism. You can help in the team or the security team is uh, worked with uh, specifically to building a cyber threat intelligence. It's very important to have this knowledge with the Python, again, to automatize all those process. And not only that, but we need to have the strengthening cyber resilience because uh, the threads are changing all the time. Okay, so this is just a, a specific theoretic part, let's say, uh, in this way. So, and now we, I will explain, so how I using this creative mind in my tests, okay? So the purpose of this test is I perform these different testings for a different security vendors, okay? So I, I pick up this code and I put in some improvements and I perform a different tests to explore different security sensors, okay? Because sometimes when you try to use any specific tools, let's say, I know, I don't know. So for example, if you need to install uh, some antivirus in your environment or using specifically what to protect the organization or even using, for example, uh, let's say PyCharm, for example, like uh, specifically EDE, it works, or um, whatever other IDs you like, for example. So you have a specific IDE, it works, and you have an extension to using this, like a plugin, okay? Uh, so basically, this is the recommendation from the community and the enterprise company. It's, it's very nice and very uh, useful, by the way. Uh, but my point is, when you talk about the security perspective, Pay, pay attention to this. Sometimes the company is using the specifically report as a base to be a, this is the Gartner recommending those four or five organizations like the best company. But my, pers my point is, so how I can guarantee this is, that this is tools is really, really good for my environment, for my specifically setting that I need to put in here. And that's the point. Because of that, I created these, I using this Python code to test or to create a different efficient and detection tests in my environment. So I install the protections and after that I using to download in different malwares in my environment. The first test that I executing is to simulate a specifically target. When I download the malware in my environment and after that I use executing this malware to download in my environment. And my idea is to test the detection by signatures 
by next generation antivirals and the machine learning. So this is the purpose. I download the malware based on a specifically hash, download the malware environment. So I will have the malware inside of the malicious software inside of my environment. So what should be the behavior of this engine responsible to protect my environment? So what is or what should be the behavior? So this is the first test. The second test, I will using a specifically API. I will requesting the API from Mauer Bazaar in a specifically community repository, let's say this way, responsible for many researches uh, around the world can upload the different Mauers for this uh, uh, repository. And I will call this API and I can download not just only one malware, but I can download more than one. And this case, for example, in my tests, I download more than 200 malwares per day. And I will explain during this uh, presentation. So this is the first code that I'm using, okay? And by the way, this code I can share after this presentation, the link, it's from our bazaar and a specifically guy from Switzerland, by the way. Um, they create these and all those code you can find in Mauer Bazaar. By the way, recommended to use in Python code. Okay, it's pretty simple. It's, it's really simple. You can import the specifically library to request that. Okay, the requests the, the system and the specifically argument because you need to set this the code to be more you know more clear, more fun using Py Zipper to uncompress the zip the, the, the zip code the zip file. Why? Because when you download specifically malicious code, usually different applications or different repository, let's say, uh, different uh, <clears throat> communities packet all those files in a specifically zip and put in a specifically password inside of that. Because of that, I use in this specifically library to download this. It's again, I use it from this repository. Maybe you can look on this and then you are thinking, so I can improve this code. I can put in, in the matter rate in this, putting this uh, uh, coding in a different way. No worries about that. Probably you have more experience than me when you talk about the developer code. But again, I'm a security guy. I can using uh, some codes uh, by Python, but it works for me. So just because of that, some simple recommendations. So again, you can see here dash s to, to, to set the, red, the hash. And after that, dash u to request the unzip this file downloaded from this website, okay? The continue of this uh, code, as you can see here, the password, usually when you download uh, this code from a specific repository, usually the password is infected because it's a malicious, okay? It's a real malware. Uh, yeah, only, only another interesting information here. Usually, not usually, always in my tests, I using the real malware, not this, you know, the calculator, change it, okay, no, no, I using malicious on the real malware. Why? Because I like and I prefer, because it's a real, okay? Because in a day by day, we will receive, in, you, you will receive a specifically malware, not a, you know, calculator with the specifically cryptography behavior. No, no, it's a malware, okay? And uh, here you can set your own API from our bazaar when you, you basically you need to register, a specific account there, you will using a specific Twitter account, and you have you can use in this API to put in here. Basically, it is very simple. Okay, and if you see, we we'll call this API. Okay, you we'll request this API, and based on this API, API you can set here again the hash. So basically, the code you will call this code, put in the hash, and after that, that you has um to uncompress, as you can see here in this code, and you set here the password as I set here, okay? And basically this is the first test, as you can see here, Python executable, this I call Python here, and uh, and after that, this is my my code by bazaar.py, dash s, maybe this is small, but this is dash s, and if you see here is specifically hash and dash u, okay? So I download, downloaded and unpack it. So basically I put this screenshot here to see the malware, zip it, and here unzip it. Because remember the first purpose is to download the malware in my environment and after that to see how is the behavior of the specific engine, the um, 
security vendor, how the security vendor will work. Okay, so how is the, 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 the answer from this? In this case, is a cyber reason, okay? So as you can see here, from our bazaar, remember, this is a repository. I downloaded this hash, as you can see, is the same hash, ED01. This is a, is a specifically malware called the signature is WannaCry, is a ransomware. It's a very known attack, okay? But Philippe, you are using the testing to executing the no malware. Yes, this is the first idea to download the no malware to see what should be the behavior from the engine, okay? From the signatures. So the idea here is the cyber reason needs to block this attack because it's a known, it's known, no malware, okay? So first of all, as you can see here, the solution block it. In this case, very nice, works well because the solution block this possible attack. And as you can see the log, the name the detections of the solutions is Trojan ransomware wanna crypto. It means block it, the wanna cry. If you see here is the hash. And by the way, it's very small, but is I can translate for you, it's no malware. Is that means block it, no malware works good. Let's see in another Sophos. It's another kind of solution. If you see here the same code, bazaar.python dash s. Remember, I need to set the hash, okay, hash. But in this case, I'm using another malware because I put in here 22ED8BA. It's different, just to simulate it different. I select, you know, different malwares to see the behavior. In the same case, download it and unpack it. And if you see here the log, block it by solution. Very nice. I tested in, in four or five solutions, okay? But in this case, when I execute this in a crowd strike, it's another solution. I execute in here the same code, Python. I, the, the name of the file is different. In this case, it's malware underscore bazaar, dash s, the, the big hash, okay? Dash u to, un, to unpack. I, I just put in here some fun things like a Zoom Security Labs because it's my previous job. And again, download it and unpack it. But in this case, the solution didn't block it. Why? Of course, all those tests I reported for different security vendors. I send the report to Cyber Reason, I send the report to Sophos, and I send the report to a, a CrowdStrike. And I receive, I have some conversation with different security vendors. I have good conversations and I have a bad conversations for others, unfortunately, but it's our life when you talk about the security. And in this case, specifically CrowdStrike didn't block it when I performed this test because this solution didn't work with uh, signatures. That, that is the answer from provided from this vendor in this case. Uh, we don't like, we, not like, we don't using the signatures to block, or to block the, the malware. The, this company based on the real time detection, let's say this way. It means you need to execute itself. We need to execute them of the file inside the environment. And when you execute this, so after that, the solution we were using specifically machine learning and other configuration to block the solution. For me, it's not too good. We need to use in both solution, machine learn and signatures. Why? Because if you already know that is a malware, so why you need to execute itself? It's a malware. Just block it and that's it. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the second Python code. In this case, it's almost different. It's, it's quite different. You can see here I using others. Uh, libraries to import here the request. I put in here just a specifically color, but in this case, I am using <clears throat> based on this API, as you can see here, mb api abuse sh, the same API. But if you see here, I request another URL that downloads. In this case, every day in the end of the day, the Mauer Bazaar repository. Create, uh, create an specifically daily malware batches, okay? And putting a specifically repository, let's let's suppose it. It's a kind of FTP, not exactly FTP, but you know, as a repository that I can call something there, okay? And every day 
the Mauer Bazaar creates this daily Mauer branch. So I was wondering when I create this test. So if I simulate a specific, a specifically outbreak infection, so I thought, and I execute this because again, you probably you already heard about the denial of service in a web application. But if you try simulate the same thought, but to try broke the engine from the security uh, vendor, the security solution that you have in your uh, laptop, let's say, or in your server, for example, you have the binary to protect. Inside of this binary, you have engines. So maybe if you simulate uh, outbreak infections, maybe you can broke, maybe not. So that's my idea when I create these specifically tests. So if you see here, I can set here the data, basically. Um, or if you don't put in the specific data, they will call the, the default data, okay? As you can see here, the download completed. And after that, saving daily malware bags completes. And after that, as you can see here, daily malware bags unpacked. I mean, I will uncompress all those files in this specific environment. So that's the idea, okay? So for some reason again, so I executing the same test as you can see, bazaar underscore download dot hidden. And if you see here, I downloaded this specifically uh, data set here, download is completed, saving data set or data set, let's say here. And after that, I will unpack it. So let's say, let's see here, many, many hours here. It's very small, but it's more than 200 uh, malware in this specific test. I don't know if you can see here, but the CPU in this case, you know, it's it too high because imagine, so more than 200 malware in the same environment. So the engine works a lot. Again, all those malware are no malware. Okay. So if you pick up all those malware and put in specifically antivirus scanning online, so probably you are already heard about that. It's a virus total or virus total. You can put in this binary or hash your file there and you can check based on many different engines provided from these security vendors. You can check if binary URL, um, hash, file, if this uh, specific information is malicious or not. So all those in these cases are malicious. So in this test, basically, Cyber Reason didn't detect only four files. So I reported from I reported I reported those informations from them, and uh, they improved the solution. It's very nice conversation. The second test, the, se the second test that I executing the same test using, for example, not using but from another company called Sophos. In this case, the test happened happened in a different way because in this case. The, the daily breaks, it was more than 500 on this day when I tested. But they have here, as you can see in this green call, in the red color, uh, more than one binary, not only specifically binary, it means the antivirus or machine learning. They have, as you can see here, I don't know, seven and, or eight binary running in this own one only machine you can imagine. So many, many services running the same time to protect. So in this case, I broke it, the engine. You know, the solution didn't block it. Many no malware because I get I, I got the success when I download more than 500 malware inside in this environment. Again, just only using this specific Python script to download it, using this specifically URL to download the daily breaks. You can see, and I reported these informations to Sophos and the only answer that I received there from them, it was yes, uh, more than 500. Of course, we know that uh, the engine probably broken or we receive a high CPU, but you know, for me, it's not a good answer. Because if I'm an attacker, I know how I can explore the solution. But anyway, and to finish this, because I during this presentation, I just to show you two uh, Python script, but I will 
share more one Python script. Very, very easy Python script. If you see here, it's very simple in using Python 3. Open and specifically services here or process here, like I'm using a specifically open socket. I using here this specifically IP address in my own environment. I will connect my code in this specifically server. In this case, this is the server from the attacker. Okay, in this case, I was a, I was an attacker using this specifically port seventeen seventeen, and I will request him to open this specifically services. If you see here, system thirty two is is administration process in the Wittmann machine. Okay, so I will using this coding to explore in a specifically environment, okay? So basically, in my tests, I protect this organization, let's say this way, we're using CrowdStrike, because remember the explanation, the solution protect by real time. So when I execute something, they need to protect. Remember this explanation, we don't work with uh, uh, known threads, nothing, not signatures. We work with uh, and no threads, and you, when you execute something. So basically, this is the finish. So, okay. So first of all, I, you need to apply the solutions here. So I will delete the file here just to explain it to the beginning. So this is the uh, specifically malicious code. Then I will delete. So remember, <clears throat> not remember, but when I execute some tests, usually I record I, I record all those tests to present this to the vendor, okay? I, I prepare a report and I put in attached the, the demo because it's very important to share all those tests that I are performing. So first of all, I apply the solution. So we don't have many time to explain all the all details, but I apply the policies here, policy applied, if you see here, and all those policies are enabled. And by the way, not only enable, but if you see here in some cases in extra aggressive and here is extra aggressive. <laughs> I mean, it's maybe pioneer, paranoid uh, protection, you know, but just to understand how the solution works and, you know, next generation to virus behavior based on, on uh, I enable everything, you know, so. If you thought something malicious, you will block your thoughts, okay? <laughs> That's the idea by, behind of this test. So I enable all those things here. And after that, I explain here about this specifically services. It's running, it's running everything, it's running uh, and I will need to test. So as you can see here, this is my attack machine, okay? I open the to listening in the 1717 port, remember? And remember the IP address, okay? 192.168.106 and 140, okay? And um, just to show you the same IP address that I show you inside the code. Remember the IP address of my malicious machine and here the IP address. And I open the services as you can see here, okay? And I just need to execute my file in the Victor machine. So it's a malicious behavior should be blocked. I executing the shell, open the service here. It's very fast. Let me show you again when I, in the green color here, take a look at that green color, open the services using the open socket, but something happened. Where is the blocked? Not, nothing blocked, but bow. I got a shell. So I have the access in the victim machine. Take a look, that's a very simple code. And if you see here, the roast name is a ready hunting, Windows 10, local admin, the IP address, the IP address of the victim machine. I can, you know, find information of the system information. I can see all those information from this machine. I move, let's, let's, let's see here. I move to the desktop folder. As you can see here, take a look at that. I'm here, you can see here, none file here, okay? And now you're creating a simple file here. I will call this file, I don't remember what the name that I put here, 
but I, I remember that I put in here, you lose. And uh, it's a simple text file that I create in here, as you can see. Uh, okay, very creative, <laughs> lose doc text. And if you go there and you try and find it specifically that, that desktop, as you can see here, the file is there. So I'm creating, I have the access. I mean, I can create whatever you want. I can manipulate whatever you want. And by the way, I made, I made different steps here. I recorded all those tasks. I called the API, I download the other PowerShell, but all those informations is for other talk. <laughs> okay, because it's a spoiler. So maybe the people asking me about the, the books, I can recommend you very interesting books about not only for the security way, like a Python ethical hacking, but uh, you can, I have other recommendations to use into the DevOps environment and Cal Linux in, in the Kubernetes from Packet, by the way. And I have a partnership with them, so I can provide a specific ebook for, I don't know, two or three for free. If you want, you can talk with me by the, in the Twitter. You can send me a message in Twitter account or by LinkedIn, wherever you want. And I have two or three ebooks, okay, uh, to send you if you want, uh, remember. So just to increase your knowledge, basically. And, but if you prefer to receive a print, yeah, I think I can help you, but it's not the idea for this talk is just to remember you have, you know how the Python works. So how you can use your creative mind. That's my idea to you during this conversation. So I hope that I can help you and I finish here my presentation. So uh, if you have any question, Adam, or anything to, to, to talk with me. So I, again, I, I, I really appreciate this opportunity.